Yeah, TikTok's kind of fun too, because um, like you were saying, like I would just see how what the other TikTokers are doing, and then try to apply it from an ag viewpoint. So mm-hmm. it's like jumping on some of those TikTok trends and trying to make it applicable to cows and dairy and farm life. Yeah, and, and I mean, um, as I'm sure you've learned through your community, people, I mean, love animals. You know, they exactly. like they if if they can find a way to be attached to an animal, they will. So I mean, that's kind of a, a perfect solution to that. It is just you know, give them the opportunity to to have a say on on you know what you do with your cows and what you name them and all that kind of stuff, and they they will they'll latch to you. Yep, exactly. Talk Ag to Me, the podcast dedicated to improving ag literacy around the globe. I'm your host, Brennan Black, and I'm very excited for this episode because this is actually one of our first ever uh, interviews with another ag education-based uh, media platform uh, person that I've met online. So uh, this is Steven. He's going to give his own little introduction here. I'll kind of let him take the floor, but um, I think this is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk a little bit about agriculture um, on different you know, media-based platforms. This one's actually a little bit different. Than I was expecting it's it's a, a dairy man on TikTok, which you don't hear about too often. But um, mm-hmm. it, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm just going to let our our guests here kind of take the floor, and then we'll, we'll jump straight into the question. So Stephen, all right, yeah. So my name's Stephen. Uh, I'm a third generation California dairy farmer, and uh, I started on social media like 10 years ago, just because I realized that there was a need for um, people to. Uh, to have good information coming from farmers because a lot of the information I was finding online at the time was uh, just plain wrong. And so every time I would Google questions about agriculture and I've seen these wrong answers coming up, it really motivated me to want to put out good information on what's happening. And so I started about 10 years ago with my dairy blog, um, dairymoose.com. Moose worthy information about dairy. (laughs) Uh, Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, I started answering questions about topics that people were interested in, like are there antibiotics in milk or um, what happens to the male calves, mm-hmm. um, just different questions like that. And I've I've been very encouraged because I've gotten a variety of responses. I've gotten a lot of negativity, but I've also got a lot of positive response. Because there are a lot of people that are out there just looking for this kind of information. And it's just kind of evolved over the years. So I still do my my blog, but then also I'm on a couple of other media platforms like Twitter, um, Facebook, Tumblr. And now I'm I'm mostly um, doing all my stuff on TikTok, which has been pretty exciting. Awesome. Well, yeah, no, I think that that's, you know, that's a great way to start things off. I actually hadn't realized, you know, how long you've, you've been at this. You've, you know, you got some experience in, in the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of evolved because um, the internet kind of changes. So when I first started out, um, I used SEO to really get my website boosted and get, um, get, um, visibility that way and then i started using facebook and twitter to kind of push my blog articles but over the years um things have kind of changed and now like facebook is a lot more restrictive on who sees Mm -hmm. content and so is twitter so i've kind of been moving towards other platforms like um like tiktok and tumblr just because i get more uh visibility that way Mm. Awesome. So yeah, I actually came across Steven's uh, TikTok page. It's actually how we got in contact. And um, I was really intrigued to see kind of, you know, the style that you go about teaching people about uh, the dairy industry. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, as as you've mentioned on your page before, you know, you're there to entertain, but people learn something that's good too, um, which I think is a good attitude to have towards, you know, teaching people about something like agriculture, you know, just put it in a context that they like, like, don't make a big deal about it, basically, you know, treat Mm -hmm. it as if it's casual and let them kind of catch on. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot of people on TikTok that are very good at educating mm-hmm. on the topics, but um, for my page, it's more more just about being transparent, kind of showing like what the inside life of a dairy farmer is like. So 
Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's kind of a, a big policy on this podcast is full transparency. I mean, we talk about anything and everything. If somebody has a question, we answer it. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I, I've always said that, you know, the, the less transparent you are, the more issues you're going to have basically. Um, yeah. so I think that's, you know, that, that's awesome that you're having a, a page where you just, I mean, I saw your, your video today where you actually posted a, a cow who was, who was calving. So yeah. uh, I was a little surprised to see that one on, on your page, but I think it was awesome that you showed it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, some people might think it's gruesome, but it's one of the facts of life. And uh, it's good that people can have the opportunity to see something like that. Cause, um, yeah. So it's not something you see online pretty readily. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's, you know, like, like you said, it's, it's a completely natural process. It's just something that people aren't, aren't really exposed to as much as they need to be. So I think mm-hmm. it's awesome that you're, you're exposing them to it. Yeah. So I, I want to talk a little bit about your, um, and we can, you know, we'll go back to like your blog and some of your other platforms as well. But because I met you on TikTok, I kind of want to start there and sure. you know, work, our, work our way back. Um, so on your TikTok page, I first kind of came across you by finding videos of you, uh, you know, with your cows and, you know, you have like some of like the, uh, the more like trendy TikTok music playing in the background, which I thought was, was kind of funny, you know, like mm-hmm. most, most people on TikTok are, are dancing to this music and you have cows running around in a pen doing it. So I thought it was kind of, <laughs> it, it was a funny twist on it, which I, I really appreciated. Um, but one of the things I really, I, I picked up on quick was that you have kind of a little community built around your TikTok page and they even like, they name some of your calves. They ask how your, how your herd's doing. Like they love learning about some of the things that you're teaching about. Like, um, I mean, you, you even had some, some new characters show up on, on your page, like, like, like Lucy and, and Clover and, and, uh, crazy Cora and, and some of those other cows that you, you treat as if they're like, you know, they're members of your family, but people are always asking yeah. about them as if they're, they're members of a TV show. So <laughs> yeah. how did that idea came to mind of having like your, your comment section, name your calves? Uh, it's all about trying to create more engagement. And so the more you can get like the viewers to, to participate in the uh, content, um, the more uh, motivated they are to kind of spread your message. Mm. So that's, that's one thing that we started doing and um, people really like uh, doing that because you know, people don't, not a lot of people get the opportunity to visit a dairy farm. So this is a way that they can see the farm, they can name the animals and uh, kind of just keep track of how things are going. And I already have a lot of favorite cows <laughs> myself just working on the farm. So uh, it's just kind of a natural, um, <laughs> natural outlet, I guess. Awesome. But, yeah. Sorry. I wasn't sure if you were, if you were done. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I saw, you know, I saw your, your post about Clover being your, your favorite calf and I, uh, can't, uh, can't say I blame you there. <laughs> <laughs> She's cute. <dude. laughs> yeah. But no, that's really cool. I mean, it's, it's definitely an interesting take on, on really getting the community engaged with what you're doing. And that's something that I think that a lot of, uh, you know, even people who are more like larger advocates for teaching people about agriculture, aren't really doing that kind of approach to things. Like they're, they're talking to, to people about what they're doing, but they're not actually letting them be part of it. I think that's kind of a big step for, for ag education is getting people, you know, not just acquainted with what's going on, but actually having them be a part of the system too. And feel like that they're actually involved in, in that process and makes them kind of, you know, not just understand it better, but also relate to it and actually want to want to protect it almost. Yeah, no, exactly. I I agree with that. Awesome. So what was kind of the, you know, like, I know that you kind of mentioned how you you started the blog 10 years ago and then it it slowly spread out to other platforms and you eventually got to TikTok and that's been, you know, exciting for you lately. What was kind of the, you know, the, the spark that made you decide to jump into the, you know, the the ag education platform to to jump on the blog, to start spreading information about agriculture online? Uh, It was just all the misconceptions that were online. So there's a lot Mm -hmm. of activists trying to say what dairy farmers are like and, uh, how we treat our cows, but there's there was no dairy farmers online actually sharing the truth. So um, I just wanted to be I just wanted to be able to put out accurate information and actually show people how we treat our animals because we do a lot of I mean the whole goal of a dairy farm is to make the camp, the animals as comfortable as possible. Mm. And so uh, yeah, that's kind of what motivated me to get more engaged and. 
Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that was kind of the, the main motivation for, for me starting the podcast too, is I saw a lot of people who uh, either didn't know anything about agriculture or, or they were spreading false information on, on, on social media platforms. And so I kind of, you know, took a stand. I, I couldn't find a whole lot of other uh, podcasts or other media platforms that are really doing what I was doing. So I decided mm-hmm. to start it up and, and say, you know, if nobody's going to correct them, then I will. And, you know, yeah. kind of, kind of worked out for the better that way. I mean, I had, I've had people on here that didn't know and truly thought they were telling the truth. And they came on here and after we had the conversation, they realized that, that what they said was, uh, was false and they, they corrected themselves. So, you know, it's, it may not always be that they're intentionally trying to, to spread harmful information. It may just be that they honestly thought that what they were saying was the right thing and they were just, you know, misinformed. Yeah, no, exactly. And like what I've realized is that there's not a lot of farmers online kind of engaging with people. So mm-hmm. there's like a lack of information and um, there's, there's, um, there are other dairy farmers that I engage with on TikTok mm. and I try to like ping off ideas on them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not a lot of information online about it. So uh, yeah, no, it's, it's really motivating though, seeing some other dairy farmers start to get engaged also. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I actually have a, you know, a close friend of mine that lives in, in my little dairy town of, of, Tal- of Tulare. He's got a, mm-hmm. a TikTok page and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if, you, don't know if you've heard of um, California Dairy Dad. Oh, sure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yep. T- no, Tyler's yeah. A, a good guy. He's he's a buddy. Yeah. Of mine. He's actually been on the podcast. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he was actually kind of the one that got me into the idea of, you know, ag education on, on TikTok or, or kind of engaging with the ag because I didn't even know there really was mm-hmm. an ag uh, part of TikTok until I, I searched for it and I eventually found yeah. you and Tyler and some other guys on there. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's nice to see how many like dairymen and other farmers are starting to get into the, you know, the habit of, of educating people on the platform that everyone's going to. Mm-hmm. And it, I think that, you know, if you would, if you looked at, at a platform like that five years ago, or even a couple years ago, that wasn't happening. Like this is a very yeah. recent thing that people are, are all starting to swarm towards this now, which I think is awesome. Yeah, TikTok's kind of fun too, because um, like you were saying, like I would just see how what the other TikTokers are doing, and then try to apply it from an ag viewpoint. So mm-hmm. it's like jumping on some of those TikTok trends and trying to make it applicable to cows and dairy and farm life. Yeah, and, and I mean, um, as I'm sure you've learned through your community, people, I mean, love animals. You know, they exactly. like they if if they can find a way to be attached to an animal, they will. So I mean, that's kind of a, a perfect solution to that. Is just you know give them the opportunity to to have a say on on you know what you do with your cows and what you name them and all that kind of stuff, and they they will they'll latch to you. Yep, exactly. TikTok's been pretty fun in other ways too, because you don't know kind of what piece of content is going to go viral. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the most random things will go viral right and yeah then, no, that's then, the craziest the, thing then the pieces of content that you worked really hard on and you think oh this is going to be big and it just doesn't get any <laughs> views <laughs> yeah it's kind no, of fun. Exactly. just throwing things out there and see what what goes yeah no that's 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 the truth i mean i i haven't had anything i mean I don't post very often, but I haven't had anything blow up just yet. I'm actually considering starting a TikTok for my podcast, which uh, by the time this goes up, I might have already done it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that was something that I was I was recommended was just you know, like you said, it's almost like a you know, it's like roll with the dice. Like sometimes you'll you'll roll it and and you have something really, really simple just blow up and and you know out of nowhere you have a thousand new followers and you have something you worked on for days and it gets like a like and like mm-hmm. it's just yeah, you know, it's, it's funny how that works. Yeah. But uh, no, I think it's really, I mean, and, and like, we, like you mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a need, like there's a hole in the market for it. And there is definitely a need for, you know, people to be out there doing that kind of thing, because, you know, as, as mad as we like to get the consumer for not knowing how we're supposed to get mad at them when there is no information out there for them. So exactly. yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's really good what you guys are doing kind of, you know, not just providing the information, but, but giving it in a way that, helps the consumer feel comfortable with it too. Cause that's kind of, I mean, that's been a big goal on, on this podcast is to find a way to have that happy medium of still providing the information, but, but basically giving it in a language that consumers can um, appreciate and you know, exactly. not, like not just speaking ag to them, but speaking, you know, speaking to them in a way, like I, I often have conversations with, with consumers on this podcast where we talk about agriculture in, in the context of movies and video games and it helps them understand yeah. agriculture better. Yeah. So 
Um, I know that you, you mentioned that you started the, the blog originally because there was a lot of misconceptions on the internet. There's people, you know, posting false information or there was, you know, people who were, who were attacking agriculture have, and I'm sure you have, but have, have you kind of noticed, you know, over your time on, on the internet, especially on TikTok, um, you know, people who have, who have attacked you for what you're doing or who disagreed with what you're, what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of people disagree, like on my blog, like certain, certain pieces that I've written got a lot of negative attacks. Hmm. Um, so there's, there's a lot of negativity, but all my pages I leave open for discussion. So even like say if a vegan comes to my page and disagrees what I'm saying, um, they have the opportunity to write a response and I actually enjoy engaging with them hmm. as long as it's, uh, you know, from a point of mutual respect, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, Sometimes that's challenging, but uh, I I really like discussing like where their viewpoints are and and sharing with them my viewpoints and seeing if we can get to a more middle ground. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of them are activists, so they really have no desire for that. But I hope by like with the content and that I'm putting out that they can at least see that there are that farmers do care and um, animals are treated well in farms. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a big, you know, that's a big deal is that, um, you know, not only are you willing to talk to them, which is, which is, I think a, a big thing, but, but you're also willing to show them, you know, not just tell them what you believe, but show them too. Um, that was, exactly. that was a big, that was a big thing that I talked about with, with Tyler, you know, the California dairy dad, um, mm-hmm. on his episode, we, we sat down and we talked about, you know, the idea of, of, of dairymen caring for their, for their cows and that, you know, you have a lot of, you know, activists that will come on pages because he does live streams all the time and, and he'll have mm-hmm. people come on and attack him on his live streams. And he basically just has to tell them like, look, my cows are chewing their cud. They're under misters. They're in the shade. They've got soft bedding. You know, they're, they're healthy. You can, you can literally see like their, their breathing is steady. Like they're not stressed in any way. If they could get a better life, I would give it to them. Like, you know, they're like, yeah. he basically like breaks down you know, even from a biological perspective, how comfortable his cows are, which was a really big deal. And, and, you know, even, even some of the activists that were attacking him had nothing to say to it because that's, you know, you, you can't refute that. So <laughs> it, it like, and, and he never like attacks them, He but he, you know, like you and, and, you know, like some of, some of the other people in the ag community, and I, I try to be the same way. We, you know, engage in conversation for the sake of learning, not for the sake of attacking anybody. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's, I think that's awesome that you're able to, you know, even, even if people try to come after you, you still know how to, how to handle them in in a a respectful manner and, you know, just tell them like, Hey, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing. If I was doing anything wrong, then you'd be able to tell, but I'm not, you know, I care about my cows. Yeah. And and when, a lot of times when activists leave comments on your content, um, I use it just as a platform to give a response. I don't necessarily think I'm going to be able to change their mind. But everyone who's lo- watching that conversation, um, it gives them the opportunity to see what my response to an activist is like. Mm. So I remember that you have to remember that and make sure you keep it respectful and and you know positive. Right. Yeah. No. Exactly. So have you? I mean, from everything I've seen from looking at your videos, you've had a, an overwhelmingly positive response in, in proportion to your negative response. So do the people in your community kind of like, how, how do they react whenever you get negative comments like that? Um, people, people that are on my TikTok are, are mostly positive. I have gotten some negativity on some of the videos and I've also gotten some of them flagged and taken down for pointless reasons. Like I had one TikTok, it was about how we give our cows pedicures, how we trim mm-hmm. their hooves. And um, they flagged that video and took it down for, violent and graphic content <laughs> there was there was nothing graphic or violent about it and the whole oh, point no. of the little bit was to educate you know that cows comfortable we have to do this because um cows need their hooves trimmed mm-hmm. and um, anyway we got the video restored but it's just kind of um we deal with some of that harassment <laughs> mm, yeah no i can imagine <laughs> yeah. so yeah no i haven't so i haven't been super active on your page for very long do you do like like do you live stream and engage and engage with your audiences is it all videos do you kind of like what's your like how much interaction do you do with your with your audience 
Um, right now, it's just posting um, content. Try to post like on a daily basis, mm. um, so we can get more um, more views. Mm. Kind of build on build on the previous videos and keep it rolling. But then also, uh, like I've done some live streams, but out on the farm, I don't have really good Wi-Fi or internet, so. <laughs> gotcha. I haven't been super successful because in our barns the uh, <laughs> this the connection is not very great. But I I'm hoping to do more of that in the future. So. Yeah, no, that's I mean, from from everything I've heard, that live streams are kind of one of the best ways to get that kind of interaction. I mean, mm -hmm. you get all kinds, of, and even people that you're that aren't following, you can still stumble upon your live stream sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, I've been that's kind of a, a new goal for for me is to try to get more, you know, live stream content out there. And I'm actually going to be working with uh, California dairy dad. And we're going to be doing some, some live streams and stuff like that. So um, oh, that's great. yeah. So yeah. I mean, if, if we get that down, then maybe we'll even, we'll even tag you in and, and sure. have a little, you know, uh, dairy conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I love to be involved. That'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So uh, where have you seen, I mean, in your 10 years, obviously you've been involved in the, in the blog and on Tumblr and all that kind of stuff. Where have you seen the most activity on, you know, like the most responses, the most interest, the most engagement, you know? In the past, it's mostly been on my website. Hmm. And um, I'd have a lot of people just find my website organically through Google. Hmm. And so I have a lot of random um, conversations that happen there and engagement. But then, um, I don't know, the last probably two years, I'm getting more engagement on on like Tumblr and TikTok. So I've kind of focused more of my attention there now. Yeah, but I'm still still writing some articles, but not as frequently as I used to. Right. So for your operation, for your, not, not for your dairy, but for your, um, your media operation, um, mm -hmm do you have like a, like a team or is it just you? Like you run the website by yourself, you run the, like all that kind of stuff, or do you have like consultant, not, not consultants, but do you have like, like family you work with or friends that you're kind of working with or? Uh, no, it's pretty much just me. But then my girlfriend's also been helping me with like my TikTok, getting video, <laughs> filming me <laughs> because it's kind of hard to film yourself. Yeah. And, um, she's, she's really good at it also. So <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, I definitely understand that struggle. I've, I've been running this project for almost three years by myself. So it's mm -hmm. it, not always easy to have a cameraman on hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but that's awesome. Um, so where do you see, I mean, I know this is kind of a, a, a deep question, but where do you see your projects going from here? Like, are you going to expand to more platforms or you like, do you have like a, like a goal in mind for, for how many people you want to reach or, or a certain, you know, a certain like milestone you want to hit? I'm hoping to keep growing the TikTok following so mm. far, like getting the first thousand followers on TikTok took me a long time, but it seems to be like snowballing now. So yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I, your pages seem to blown up pretty, pretty quick for, I mean, how, how long have you been on TikTok? Uh, I've been on it for like a year and a half, but um, recently just been mo posting more regularly, like mm. the last two months probably. So okay. Um put a lot more focus on it now yeah huh. that makes sense so yeah. and uh, it seems like you definitely had some you know some some dramatic growth over the past you know uh, past few few months or so yeah um, that's i'm getting be... a lot of, i'm getting a lot of good engagement from the ag community on tiktok so that's mm. been encouraging and the people that like animals and cows right um, but then the key is like, how do you tap into like the larger audiences of, you know, like people who aren't necessarily looking for cows, but then they just stumble upon them. <laughs> right. <laughs> how can I get my content in front of people who aren't necessarily looking for it, but might be pulled in, you know? So. Right. Yeah. No, that's kind of the, I mean, that's, that's the, the question I think everyone in the ag department is trying to figure out right now is, you know, how do we reach a larger audience or how do we, yeah. you know, how, how do we, do we how do we stop preaching to the choir and start preaching or like getting, getting in front of audiences, uh, um, the broader audience, I guess. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, so, I mean, I don't know how this would work on a, on a TikTok perspective, but for the podcast, I was having a, a big issue with that for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. for two years I was interviewing farmers, I was interviewing, you know, people in the ag industry and I was talking about stuff that was mostly, I mean, is, is mostly informational. It was fun. It was good interviews, but it was, it wasn't anything like 
super engaging. And yeah. so it, it wasn't anything that I could, I could really attach to like a, a consumer audience. It was, you know, like you said, preaching to the choir. So yeah. it wasn't until actually it wasn't until quarantine hit that I decided to kind of shift gears a little bit. So now I've been interviewing consumers themselves. I basically just said like, well, if they're not going to find me, I'm going to go to them. So yeah, exactly. When brought on. So like I, now I bring on consumers, we have conversations, they ask questions and I have a, I have a note, there's no such thing as a super question policy. So they'll ask, you know, anything and everything that they can think of. But we talk about all kinds of different stuff. I mean, you know, controversial issues, more tame issues. Like it's anything from like, you know, why are GMOs so controversial to, you know, does a cow really have to be pregnant to produce milk? Like just, you know, Uh random stuff like that. So it's, yeah, and that seems to be working for the most part. I have been hitting a bit of a larger audience because of that. But the question is like, how much of that audience is actually consumer based and how much of it is just like that person's general connections. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's always the question of, you know, how can we, how can we reach further to an audience that isn't seeing us yet? Exactly. Yeah. Like for my website, I focused on creating like more interesting content, kind of like on a more broader, um, there is pretty like, um, big topic actually when you start delving into it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, how do you make that content more interesting? So I was, um, I created a, quite a few pieces of viral content that got spread around like different platforms organically. Mm-hmm. And um, like SEO really helped my my website bring in a lot of um, different people. Um, but yeah, TikTok is kind of a different animal. So I'm trying to like, like dairy's involved in like, cooking and baking and stuff like that so it's like how do you get to into those conversations and kind of start interacting with those those different communities Mm -hmm. um so still working on trying to crack the code so (laughs) (laughs) yeah no it's it's definitely an uphill battle i mean it's just like i think i think really what it is is just we we're exploring you know uncharted grounds now like nobody's Uh nobody's really done this before because there wasn't really a need to do it for a long time so yeah. Now that there's a need, there's, there's, you know, a bunch of experimentation on how do we do it properly. So, um, no, I think that, I think that you're, you're going about it in the right direction. It definitely seems like you're, you're getting positive results. And mm-hmm. I mean, being in the dairy industry, you do have a, I would say a bit of an advantage. Cause I, I'd say that animals are always, are almost always easier to, to teach about than plants are like, mm-hmm. I can't imagine how a crop scientist is, is getting, is getting the word out just because I feel like people are going to gravitate more towards the baby calves than the baby trees. No, that's true. Yeah. Animals are a lot more complicated. There's so many different facets to taking care of them. So Mm -hmm. yeah, no, exactly. Uh, Yeah. So, but yeah, I think, I think that's, I think it's, it's good stuff that what you guys are, what you guys are are accomplishing over there. So, Mm -hmm. um, so what have you seen is kind of the, you know, the the coolest thing about i mean not just tiktok but just in general in like the modern age of like you being involved in, in tumblr and, and other platforms and that kind of stuff like what has been kind of the coolest thing about you know being able to reach out to other audiences and get the word out there and kind of i don't like blow up for lack of a better word um i think maybe just like the um the different connections that you make that you never thought you would make so mm-hmm. um <laughs> you talk and connect to a lot of people that you don't think that you would formally connected with. So like now I'm connected to dairy farmers, like in other States mm-hmm. and also with different ag people. And, um, no, it's just kind of fun, you know? So it's awesome. And have you, so this is actually something that I've learned from a few other uh, ag media people. Mm-hmm. Have you faced any, um, like negative comments from people in the ag community? Like that think that you're not, accurately portraying the dairy industry and you think that um no not i don't think so no my that's good industry has been mostly supportive oh good There's yeah not, not not a whole lot of farmers dairy farmers that are doing this kind of work so mm. uh, most people are kind of excited and encourage me to keep going so oh, good. it's been it's been, mo- it's been all positive that's that's good to hear. I've I've definitely so I've heard from some other ag ed people that they've been uh, facing a little bit of you know drama with with the ag community. The ag community is coming in and saying like, hey, you know, like don't waste your time talking to consumers. They don't want to listen. Or hey, you're you're not you know accurately portraying how farmers are. Or like you know they're they're not satisfied with how 
the message is being portrayed. So I wasn't sure if that was just like, mm -hmm. you know, an individual basis or if just in general, you know, farmers are, are having a hard time with, with people going out there and spreading the message. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't heard any that. I guess it depends on your situation. Yeah, no, and it might be industry based too, because I haven't heard that a whole lot from the dairy industry. So maybe it's just in other industries. Yeah. So we're pretty busy as dairy farmers. Like <laughs> we got to work on the dairy and then like I'm doing all this uh, social media stuff too. So it's, it's definitely, <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of time. So yeah, no, that's true. That That's a good point. No, you guys definitely have your hands full. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Well, I mean, that, that's all I can think of. Do you have any, any questions for me or anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, yeah. What's your favorite TikTok on my profile? <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, anything with, with, uh, with crazy Cara is hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> crazy Cara is adorable. Oh man. She's, she's like she's a big great. puppy dog. Yeah. I think the one where she helps you with your delivery was, was one of my favorites. That one was, I, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah she's <laughs> she's so she's so helpful <laughs> she's something else and i yeah. i mean i i raised uh beef cattle when i was in high school so i was always you know i was always kind of one of the ones that like to see the personalities in, in different in different cows and steers and so um, yeah. that always always reminded me of of my calves was when i was raising him so i thought that was funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah every cow is different they all got their own personalities so oh yeah no i'm i'm actually teaching my girlfriend right now because she's a city kid she wasn't really raised around around cattle so i'm I'm teaching yeah. her all about like you know how they act and how and like you know how their behavior yeah. is and and why mm -hmm. they act the way they do why they you know like i'll take her out to the beef barn near my school and i'll just kind of show her like you know oh yeah this steer's putting his nose to the floor and his tail switching that means you better get away from him but this one <laughs> like I'm, I'm like teaching her all so she gets she gets so excited by it. it's funny oh that's fun yeah that's <laughs> great yeah so uh, maybe maybe that's what I'll cover in my in my TikToks. If I make a talk academy TikTok, I'll cover cattle uh, behavior. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So that that's actually a question. What's what's your favorite TikTok you've made? <laughs> uh, my favorite one was uh, called um, "Cows Channeling Celebrities," <laughs> and it was <laughs> it's, uh, just little bits of cows acting like celebrities and. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, That's but awesome. it didn't really, it didn't really quite blow up as much as I was hoping, but ah. I still, I still find it super entertaining. So you have to go look for that one. Oh yeah. No, I'll, I'll go and find it and I'll share it around. That'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Which one has, have you, you know, have you seen as kind of the most popular? I mean, maybe it hasn't uh, blown up the most, but people just seem to love it. Yeah, no, I had one that blew up. Uh, it has like 600,000 views now and it was, um, um different udders oh. on cows <laughs> so it has like the um like the bigger uttered one the one with the good personality <laughs> the virgin one <laughs> that's awesome oh, i think i actually memory, saw that one yeah memory glands come in all shapes and sizes so you know, <laughs> yeah. we celebrate diversity at our farm <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great yeah no and that's such a i mean it's like when you think about it, it's such like a simple thing, you know, just to, just to go out and record your cows and watch what they do. But it's just, it's funny how the kind of reactions you get. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. No, I'm, I'm glad that you're glad that you're doing what you're doing. It's definitely entertaining to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be, you know, shouting you out in, in other episodes and stuff and I'll be sharing you around because I think it's a good thing what you're doing. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before we close out here, I mean, I don't know if you have any other any other comments you wanted to make or anything else you needed to need to discuss. I mean, I think I think I got through all the questions I had. No, oh, yeah, no, I think uh, thank you for having me on, and really enjoyed talking with you about you know everything that I do on my social media platforms. Yeah, because, yeah, I really enjoy it. Really enjoy cows, and really just like sharing what I do. So I'm glad you I could talk to you about that. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm I'm glad that I was able to learn more about, you know, what you what you've been working on. I'll I'll be sure to share on your stuff. Um and as anyone who who watches this podcast knows, I'm a big fan of cows. So it's always a pleasure to, to talk about cows. <laughs> <laughs> cows are great. Yeah. Yeah, no they are. Um so yeah, before we wrap out, do you want to give a little a, pl a plug to all your stuff or, you know, anything you want me to share around or any names you want you want dropped? Sure, yeah. I'm, uh you can go to my website. It's uh, com. And then I'm on Facebook and Twitter as Dairy Moose. 
And then I'm on TikTok as Jerry Muse, M-U-S-E. And I'm on, oh, I'm on YouTube also as Jerry Muse. So awesome. Well, yeah, and I'll be putting all those links down in the description. So be, all of our listeners can go and check them out and, and go mm-hmm. see all your great stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be, I think that'd, that'd be a lot of fun. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thanks again for tuning in and for, for uh, joining me for this episode. And uh, you know, thanks to Steven for, for sharing all of his great knowledge and all the dairy industry stuff and, and how he got big on TikTok and, you know, his, his climb to the top of which we're still working on. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing more from the, the TikTok dairy community and hopefully we'll have some, some awesome people on here and I'm sure that we might even have you back on here eventually. So cool. yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to come back on. Awesome. Well, yeah, we'd be happy to have you. So I think that's all we got for this episode though. So for all of my listeners, thanks for tuning in and I hope you catch in uh, next week and don't forget if you wait today, thank a farmer. <laughs>